like to know if you have an answer to why your horses are so available energetically and in their presence they seem very um at ease in their ability to encounter another you know a human and mm. they have all the, they have different ranges of curiosity but i don't feel any of them to be shut down or not um mm. yeah just not present mm -hmm. i think um a couple things i think that and none of these are more or less important than the others. I'm not sure. As we talk through it, maybe we'll go, actually, that's more important. <laughs> but uh, what I'm thinking is that, um, first of all, environment. Yeah. You can't take an animal whose natural habitat is this and put it in a cage right. and think you're going to see a natural expression mm. of that animal's core being. So we have horses that were genetically have moved 25 to 30 miles a day and we need to provide movement for them and so this is another interesting thing about movement if this was just a flat square yeah. of 30 acres and you could see from one corner to the other that actually would not be a natural environment and they would become very bored they would probably become irritable they would probably start destroying the fences yeah. because they'd be like this is not this is not okay right so but this the, the landscape has different heights it has different trees it has you know they can go from one end go back go around it like you actually feel like you're journeying somewhere right so i think that's an important thing when we look at horse property to not look for the big open field right look for varied terrain look for hills look for trees look for irregularly Come on, Mama. Kumba. Yeah, she got you. You were, you were being such a bad boy with that. Good, Mama. You teach him a lesson. See? That teaches Are you, you okay, big boy? Oh. He's okay, but she got him good. She did. <laughs> she, 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 so that's, again, yeah. freedom of expression. I'm not yelling at her. Right. And I'm not going, oh, poor Kumbi. I'm going, Kumba. I watched her tell you twice to leave her alone. And you didn't leave her alone. Right. So she tagged you. Right. So, but see, he's okay. He is totally fine. Are you all going back? Hi, Taro. There comes Juno. <laughs> Hi, Junebug. <laughs> so environment is one thing. And like I said, you just do the best. If you can't move, do the best with what you have. Right. Plant trees. Yeah. Right. Um, maybe see if you can get the neighbor to give you permission to use some of their land. Maybe they've got a bunch of forests that nobody yeah. goes in. Yeah. Fence it. Use yeah. this thing. This is elastic fencing. Trees fall on it. It doesn't break the fencing. So do what you need to do to give them a more varied terrain. Right. I think the second thing is most horse people yeah. are really noxious towards horses. Mm -hmm. Like a horse explores them with their mouth, they hit them. Right. They actually, and my horses are like. <gasps> what the what and I say and so when the vet comes out or someone like that that yeah. I'm not like I I can't control him and I can't educate him he's not interested yeah I say to the horses don't go near him right he's just here to do this job and then he's gonna leave but yeah he's just just and they all stay away from him then yeah, yeah they yeah. don't initiate relationship they don't initiate dialogue because I've told them ah, this person doesn't get you he's not gonna get you leave him alone but people like you who I invite to come yeah and then like I don't give you instructions right. I don't give you warnings about how to be like the only thing I said to Maddie was that you know just know that they're not used to humans being dominant yeah so watch the herd if the herd needs to move you need to get out of the way because right. if you're blocking the exit they have to come out here yeah so again this whole thing of I'm the human mm. everybody you know we know we don't we're like right. we together are a herd Yes. And so we're going to we're going to all be respectful of each other's space. Yeah. So that doesn't mean that oh, um everybody respects my space and I expect everyone to move the second no, you know, I can be like the herd leader and yeah. I can say this needs to happen because I have a good reason. Yeah. That's fine. They they're, they'll be like, "Yeah, no problem. They'll respect me." But if I want everyone to move when I click my fingers just because I'm the human, 
then they're like, well, you're an asshole. Yeah. So then, you know what I mean? So then you yeah. have a horse that maybe is going to shut down because they're like, you're a jerk. So it's this whole thing of just going, these are just beings. Like, treat them like you would your friends. Treat them like you would your family members. Like, right. the same relationship dynamic should be there. Um, and then you also don't need to have this huge thing. Once you, once, so once the horses are respected and treated as fully sentient beings, fully cognizant, mm -hmm. right? Like, you saw, we came down that slippery creek. Yeah. Three horses waited. The yeah. lead horse yeah. waited for you to get across the creek and start up the other side. Right. Because they knew the, you could not handle nap. them coming down at the same time. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And they understood that you took three times as long to right. get across <laughs> that creek as they do just by watching you move. Right. So the, when you treat horses in this way, you also unlock a vast field of intelligence mm -hmm. that maybe you've never seen horses display before right because it's not honored or welcomed there's no yeah. space created for that intelligence to emerge yeah so you know there's a lot of then these safety concerns that just aren't there yeah because you know like you saw me I'm under Montaro's belly now people will say oh if you're touching his sheath you should wear a helmet yeah because he could lift his hoof and crack you right well yeah he could but I'm in very intimate dialogue with him I can feel his energy shift when he's like oh I don't really like that it right. does by the time it gets to him kicking me with a hoof like yeah, there I, are many messages that you didn't listen to I would have to be a freaking moron yeah like I would <laughs> have to be completely shut down I would have to have no communication link with my horse and so, and that's fine if that's where you start or right. if that's where the horse is. Cause that's yeah. the other thing, like mm -hmm. my domestic horse, Zora. Uh, no, I would not do things with her that I would do with the wildies mm -hmm. because she did not have the intelligence yeah. and the body awareness that they did. So I would be, have more safety considerations around this tame domestic horse than I would around the wild ones. Yeah because she didn't have any of the empowerment. She wasn't grounded. She wasn't, she didn't understand where her body was in space the way they did. So yeah. she might hit me by mistake. They're never going to hit me by mistake. If they yeah. hit me, it's for a reason, yeah. right? Cause they meant to. Yeah. So I think all of those things, and then the whole thing of, there is not anything that I do to them without either explaining or getting their permission or their agreement. Yeah. Like you saw me when I went to Montaro and I said, come on, let's go on an adventure. Do you want the neck loop or the halter? Mm -hmm. And I hold him like this and he touched the halter. Yeah. Okay. And then I put it on and he put his nose in the thing. Right. He's like, cause I'm like, okay, you chose the halter. So now we have to have the halter. Yes. <laughs> it's like, no, you're allowed to change your mind. If you go, actually, no, I don't feel like it. Yeah. Fine. And then you get to make your choice. Right. I'm not going to go, well, now the halter's going on you. Right. Right. And then, you know, saying, do you want me to take it off now? So there's all this thing and going, okay, well now I'll wear the halter. Yeah. You know, cause if I'm asked, I can wear it. Yeah. And sometimes I put a rope around it and I give them the rope and I go, yeah. do you want to lead me? Right. Right. <laughs> to go like, cause if we're going to do this to a horse. Yeah. Right. And then lead it around by its face. Yeah. How about we feel what that feels like? Right. Like that's noxious. Right. So w if you ask a horse to do something really noxious like that, if you have the same level of respect and awareness, that changes everything. Mm -hmm. Everything they have done from their hoof trimming to chiropractic to sheath cleaning, everything is done unhaltered at liberty. Yeah in the field or the, wherever they want to be. Right. And sometimes they've come back here to have their hooves trimmed. Yeah. And we work with them because it's like, well, we're asking you. Yeah. And then sometimes they'll say, I don't need my hooves trimmed. And we'll be like, but your hooves are looking really bad. And they'll be like, leave them alone. Yeah. And then I'll say, okay, okay. it's your feet. Right. <laughs> Guess what? Yeah. It's your body. It's your feet. So we do all these things to horses out of the fear that we're not being good horse owners or someone else might criticize us. But we're assaulting their body. We're invading their private. Like, who owns your body? Do you own it or do I own it? Yeah, exactly, right. Right? It's really a lot of what I feel are really basic things. Yeah. And then, of course, when you do all those things, you have an animal that does not resemble a domestic horse at all, right? Yeah, they, are, they definitely have a very, very 
vibrant and alive energy to them. And so what do you perceive is different with these guys? Um, I, re- I, just, I really just feel that there is an energetic autonomy and a, and a way that they are present in their bodies and even just like in their ability to like, or not their ability, but their willingness to just face me in my physical body mm. in a non-threatening way. I mean, like, um, Audie came up to me that way. Uh, Cobra came up straight, you know, um, and was so, so curious about everything, you know, until he tried to, he didn't try to eat my glasses, but he dislodged my glasses and I moved and then he was like, okay, now I'm going to walk away. (laughs) But it's just such a, um, such playful curiosity and, uh, I, they just, they just feel open. We just saw some horses that did not feel that open and um, like just energetically available, even just like, you know, me pinging and saying, hey, over there, like would, wouldn't, nothing much would come back, you know? Right. And so it's really, it's really nice to see an entire herd that way. Yes. Um, responding that way. And how do you feel um, in terms of safety Especially when you're in the middle of, say, nine or 11 of them. I mean, I feel completely safe because, like I had mentioned to you earlier, they feel like um, my baby horse at home. And so because I've made, you know, I've had, I've just chose to have that relationship with him. And I've, and because I feel heard by them, I don't worry about my feet. I don't, you know, I don't worry that they're going to like really harm me in any way because they're not interested in harming me and they're fully aware of their bodies and I can say, oh, you're a little close or, oh, I said to one of them, it was um, Juno, I was like, I don't know you yet, so please don't nibble on my fingers, right? Because I don't know how, if you know not to bite me, like Mm -hmm. you can nibble, and then he tried again and he showed me that he actually can just nibble and I'm like okay then we're cool just don't bite me yeah (laughs) because it's my skin and I don't I'm not a horse you can't just bite I mean you know you can but that's gonna hurt so please don't bite me and he didn't yeah so I know I feel completely safe because I I you know I feel hurt by them yes Mm -hmm. exactly yeah Mm -hmm. I think that's the key is that when you set it up and you allow and you facilitate your sway it's a two-way thing yeah completely so it's it it all flows both ways and I think that's where the huge reward comes in what's your reward for giving up your pseudo control yeah over another being yeah that that beautiful actual relationship back and forth yeah Mm -hmm. exactly yeah that's gorgeous I agree yeah super exhilarating exciting I'm so glad that have these long mm. moments and even when I went back to to see the horses and Odin was looking at me and we just looked at each other for a while and then she just followed and she did exactly that thing when we were going down the slippery slope I looked back and she waited and then I went all the way around and then she starts to come down so she was always behind me but I never felt like she was gonna step over me and we were talking and and I just met her so it <laughs> felt amazing it was just like there was an open dialogue and uh, slow at the start. At the start, I was like, ooh, she's big. <laughs> <laughs> but she looks so gentle. They all have that gentleness, actually, in their eyes. Because I wasn't there. Nobody was giving you instructions. Yeah. yeah. You weren't in a round pen. You were free on 30 acres. Yes. And the horse was completely free to free. choose. Yeah. Or say no. But she chose. Yeah. And that felt amazing, actually, when I saw that she came towards us, like, hi. <laughs> it was really really spectacular yeah <laughs> yeah and she left she left all the other horses and followed you alone yeah. to the back and down and across a creek and up the other side and all the way yeah. you know she followed you over basically 25 acres alone <laughs> that's true it's quite special and then these guys and then these guys <laughs>